so now moving on to the donor car um, exactly the same process as the M44 so up to you but remove the front end then remove the radiator um, you know disconnect the wiring and then drain the car of oil drain it of coolant um, then underside again it's just exhaust uh, gearbox mounts, engine mounts, drive shaft and your engine will be ready to pull again. Um, I'll skip ahead because I've already done all this. Now with the radiator removed it's a good time to uh, remove the six cylinder radiator mounts. You can see them there just under these. Um, I think, I don't know if you need them both but I'm pretty sure the six cylinder radiator is a bit different so and they're really easy, you just pull these two tabs out and then just pull it down, no bolts. So yeah, once you've um, you know, got the radiator out, disconnected the battery, exhaust, uh, drive shaft, drained all the fluids, um, we can go back to the electrics. Uh, it's like pretty much exactly the same as the four cylinder one, um, apart from you have two plugs here, but just remove them both, we'll only need to use one. Uh, but just keep them on the loom. Again, you've got these connectors that need to pop off. And yeah, just be careful of your wiring and stuff. Um, exactly the same process as stripping the four cylinder. And if you're unsure, like if you think you'll forget where a ground goes or a connector goes, just label it or take a picture of something. So I'm going to take a picture of these three so I know which order they're in. Now for the ECU side, this is going to be slightly different because this is an automatic um, but you really want you know, your main ECU which is on the bottom um, when you actually come to plug in this loom again you know when your car you're putting the engine in um, you can just disconnect the automatic ECU and sell it <laughs> or keep it whatever you want so here's the famous red label M50 ECU and because it's red label it means it has no EWS so that's confirmation and here's the auto ECU um, yeah like I said just disconnect it it's a bit fickle to get the actual auto ECU out it's not held in by screws you just have to kind of get the connector off first and then pop it down and it just pops off um, but yeah you don't need this to start the car now Compared to the four cylinder ones, these mounts are actually in much better condition and as you can tell there's say a bolt going all the way through and it goes all the way through the arm as well and then on the subframe uh, you'll see like a nut as well and just you go through the uh, wishbone whatever you call it and uh, I think they're 60 millimeter, so you've got one either side you can see the other one just about there. And because this car is automatic and automatic transmissions are so long, you can see that the transmission starts here, goes all the way back here. So you actually have two kind of cross member pieces. So this is what you have on the manual cars. But you've also got this additional one for the front. So you've in theory got four kind of gearbox mounts just for the automatic transmission so obviously all this needs to be undone. Right, so here's the big six cylinder. Um, ideally, I'd have this kind of paved flat all the way back so I could just 
put it back in a straight shot, but I obviously can't. So I'm going to disconnect the drive shaft. And then the idea is to kind of lift the engine, the gearbox rather, up and over the chassis. I can probably drop drop the car a bit now actually off jack stand so we get a bit more height. We lose a bit more height and then we should be able to do it. Look at that M50. Such a good looking engine. Yeah, so now the drive shaft disconnected and I've put the car back on the ground. We should have enough height to be able to lift the gearbox up and over. Right, so after a bit of a fight, it's out the engine. Um, again, not very good ground, but I had to move it to one side so I can get this car out. Um, now I'm going to look at detaching this automatic ZF gearbox. Can you see that ZF? Um, and yeah, prepare it. So put my box on it. Um, are there any differences to show? I think there are. This is the front. These are the two front kind of prop shaft drive shafts and on the right hand side is the automatic and you can see it's quite a bit shorter so when you're putting a manual box on this is why you need the front end of a manual one um, the back end's the same into the diff you know the second half but because the automatic gearbox is so long um, you'll need it so I don't know if you can take it for reference but say that's like I don't know three of my hands long The automatic gearbox is absolutely huge, um, really long, maybe a half bigger, so, and it's automatic, so who wants that? So yeah, going to get the uh, gearbox off, swap my collection stuff in, and then I'll be one step closer to dropping into my uh, 318 IS, and also we've got to now tow this out, because it's pretty much redundant. Now with the auto box off. You left with this ugly torque converter. This all needs to come off if you're putting a manual gearbox on. It's a few volts behind, you might have to spin it around a bit, but you get the idea. And with the torque converter removed, you're going to have to remove, I don't know what you call it, this sort of automatic flywheel. Same process. So, with you know the engine of the donor car and everything you kind of want mechanically out of the car for the engine swap, it's time to take off the good bits that you can either sell or want to keep. So this MTEC two steering wheel is definitely coming off the car. You will need the six cylinder clocks um, if you want your car to read properly. So this is going to be a pain, but these have to come out. Um, your four cylinder one will like double count and stuff. Like it will work, but it, it won't look right. Oh, and the main mechanical thing I haven't talked about yet, the diff. In this car it has an automatic diff because it's an automatic and automatic cars because they're a bit you know slower to react than manual cars actually came with slightly better geared it depends how you look at it but the gearing was better for acceleration in automatic cars so this is a 391 diff and if you put that to the engine it you know if you put a manual gearbox to this engine to this diff it actually improves your uh, you know acceleration like top end stuff is a bit but because this is a drift car it doesn't matter um so 391 is the second best gear ratio diff you can get if you want quick acceleration and don't care about top speed so this is gonna car is going to feel pretty rapid um with you know the 318 box on it on the m50 engine um i think 444 is the best gear ratio you can get for you know acceleration but that's a bit insane and you'd get that in the 318 IS automatic cars. Um, the manual gearbox I have in the 318 IS is quite good already. I think it's three something, but definitely not as high as 391. So, yeah. And here's the uh, M44 engine, the four cylinder. Um, and you can see the pressure plate, clutch and fly flywheel are in there. Um, this is what I'm going to be putting on the M50, which is under that. 
uh, and annoyingly they use Allen key bolts so these are quite easy to strip so I might use some kind of metal torque screws because uh, they sometimes work on Allen key bolts uh, and also because this clutch is perfectly aligned it's a good time to test my clutch alignment tool this is kind of you have a choice but like you need to find the small socket which fits in your pilot bearing and then the kind of stepped thing which sits in your clutch so you, you get a good fitment there and then you push and then you can see that's perfectly centered so i know that that'll work now when i put this on the m50 yeah and as i said it's hopeless trying to use allen bolts on these um allen keys because they just strip so you can get away with a t40 uh, male torx kind of bit this fits in here well and then you've got enough leverage with the, uh, the socket and you also need an extension like a, a pipe or something because you need a lot of leverage but it works and with those bolts removed you can pull off your pressure plate these things are quite heavy that'll leave your clutch um, I've already pulled it off it'll be a bit stiff but just ease it out and make sure you know which way around it is because I know I know because it's got these and it looks different on the back. Conditions, I don't know, it's probably pretty really bad, but we're going to run it anyway until it goes. And there's your flywheel, you've got these really big bolts. Um, just take your time, do it methodically, and keep going. You can see this is dual mass as well, massive piece. Another great day. I can't believe this is actually summer. I'm going to be putting the manual gearbox on the M50 now. Um, there's one thing I've overlooked because my I'm going from an automatic engine and putting a manual box on it. This is the M44, so it had a manual, you know, uh, gearbox on it. Um, inside there is a spigot bearing or a pilot bearing. Whereas I'll show you now what the M50 looks like because it had an automatic gearbox on it. So yeah, this is the M50 and as you can see, it's really wide. So, fortunately I have got a spigot bearing and I'll have to put it on. So that's the spigot bearing in the M50. Um, it was actually easier than I thought. I, I froze it overnight and with a bit of persuasion it, it popped in and then I just use the socket, some wood, to tap it another way. It goes in about a fingernail's depth and there's like a, a stop so you can't push it too far. Uh, so now I also took this shim off because the manual doesn't have this and now I guess it's just to put the gearbox on. Right so now your pilot bearing's in or spigot bearing um, you need to do the reverse so put your flywheel back on. Um, I will be cleaning this up. Now, because this is a manual flywheel obviously from the manual cart, it makes sense to use flywheel bolts, you know, that were from the manual because they might be a different length to the automatic, like this thing. There's different schools of thought on this, but ideally you should just order new bolts. However, you can reuse the flywheel bolts, like so you've got to torque them down properly. And if you use some some blue Loctite, you know, on the threads, you should be good. Now I'm doing these to 88 foot pounds. Um, you know, in like a kind of spider. Like you're not, you don't just do that, 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 that. You've got to like jump across. So just need to align the clutch, put the clutch on, and the pressure plate back on. Um, like I said, I've swapped the bolts. They were like Allen key ones, now they're hex ones. They're M8 by 16 millimeter, so pretty standard. And uh, yeah, make sure you talk them down. Now, the gearbox is actually ready to go on this automatic, what was an automatic engine, so yeah. So with your pressure plate back on, um, obviously clean it, but you get the idea. Don't forget this metal gasket that goes between the block and the gearbox. Yeah, now just to get, finally get this manual gearbox in.
So now with your manual gearbox finally attached, like I said, it's just the reverse. You want to torque down the varying you know, size of the bolts, depending on the figures, you can look them up. Um, so yeah, having a good having a torque wrench makes a difference. So torque them all down. And then, don't forget these bolt nuts here, I forgot on those. Need those for the starter. Um, the whole thing. that one's missing. A lot of things ready to go back in the car, finally. Now, so before, before you put the engine in, it's a good time, you know, to do any engine bay jobs, tidy up. Uh, because mine has got damage, I'm going to try and bend this back. Uh, it's not going on the road, so I don't care about the frame rail being bent, but it's really just to get the front end on easier, because it needs to be flat. Only one tool for the job. time for the fun part, uh, put the engine back in, it's sort of just the same process as we pulled it out but in reverse. I don't think it's going to be easy but let's go. Well, it's finally in. Um, it took a bit of playing around with the engine mounts, but at least there are only two in the front. Um, so yeah, once your engine's in, you can start moving on to stuff you want to do next. You know, you've got electrics to wire up. So think about it, you've got electricity, uh, fuel, so fuel lines. You know, the car's got to breathe, so you got to do intake. The car's got to cool down, so you need to do the radiator system. It's got to breathe out as well, so you've got to reconnect your exhaust. Drive's got to go back to the diff, so you've got to reconnect your drive shafts. Um, but apart from that, it's pretty much there. Uh, it's raining now, so I've really got to put the bonnet on quickly so the electrics don't get too wet. And the main thing is just to make sure you tighten up your engine mount bolts before you forget, and also, you know, the gearbox bolts. Uh, they should be the same.